Hello everyone, David Lang here from Israeli Cool with my weekly fireside chat. I hope you're all doing okay. Um, I know there's a bit of background noise today and I apologize. Um, not unlike Israel itself, I have some um, pretty problematic neighbors. And of course I can't control the noise that comes from the neighbors. If you recall a few weeks ago, I had a chicken clucking in the background. So, um, and I'm used to chickens that don't cluck, that are quite passive on my grill. Um, so I apologize, please stick around because I'm gonna talk about some pretty important stuff today. Uh, you could probably guess what I'm gonna talk about and you don't even have to guess. I think I included it in the description um, accompanying this video. Um, but first and foremost, before I get into the normalization of relations between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, um, I just want to talk about something else entirely to begin with. Um, and then I'm going to go straight into my thoughts on this new development. And what I want to talk about is uh, the topic of mutual respect. Okay, because something happened last week that I'm not happy about and I feel the need to speak out about because it's important. And um, I, you know, I'm not one to shirk away from topics and I'm not just here to say stuff that people want to hear. Um, I want to have discussions and, and basically you're welcome to join in on the discussion. But what I ask you is that you please show some mutual respect, not just towards me, but other uh, people watching and commenting on these videos and on my website. So what happened last week is that after my video, um, I had a certain person um, who was commenting and basically being quite, uh, let's say, insulting towards the fact that I do this in front of a grill. Now, this person's a vegetarian, okay, and I have no problem with vegetarians. But the way that he was trying to overpower me with his point of view, and he was basically saying I'm a bad parent, he was saying that eating meat causes cancer. Now, whether or not he knows that my beloved wife died of cancer is besides the point. You don't do stuff like that. Now, the fact that she did, and the fact that I know a hell of a lot about diet, because I looked into it, and the fact that we implemented a certain diet, which, by the way, involved a lot of meat, okay? It involved uh, very little sugar and carbs. So a keto-based diet that extended her life for a year, okay? Whether or not you agree with that, um, this person had no right to try to shove his ideas down my throat and show such disrespect. It was very insulting and very upsetting, actually. And then I banned this person from the page. It's a pro-Israel person. I don't care what your politics is. Left, right, middle, doesn't matter. Can we just please show respect towards each other? I'm a big meat eater, okay? And I, I'm not going around... Um, you know, writing stuff about how vegetarians are morons or things like that. I don't think they're morons. I respect people that have ideological reasons for not eating meat. I happen to eat meat and I love meat. Okay, so can we please show some respect towards each other? I mean, this person also then went into my email and just kept digging a bigger hole. Said, look, I'm sorry and maybe we can be friends again and then went and sent me a whole bunch of links showing why meat is terrible even after I explained how I know I've looked into diets, okay? So I found it very insul insulting. So I, I have to kind of, uh, um, you know, start with that. But let's get right into the good news. And the good news is, and I'm sure you're all aware of it, is that the United Arab Emirates and Israel announced, that, uh, through Donald Trump, um, that there is an official normalization of relations. And I wanted to go into that because, first of all, I'm kind of ADD and I, can't be bothered writing all of this down and also what I want to do is then after I speak my mind or even during it I welcome some questions it's just easier in this kind of video format now after this it might not be a live video and maybe I'll premiere it do the technical reasons but I'm going to be speaking with my friend who lives in the United Arab Emirates Thani Al Sharari hello Thani if you're watching this I know you're busy uh, but we'll be talking soon um, by the way, we spoke, I don't know if you, you caught it, but I had a, a Zoom uh, interview with him a couple of months ago. And do you think that's a coincidence that not long after uh, me and him have this uh, interview publicized on the web, 
that uh, Israel and the United Arab Emirates formalize uh, this normalization? I, I don't think so. I think that uh, our respective leaders watched that call and decided, you know what, the cats are the bad. Look, this Jew and this Muslim are getting along so well. They've been friends for 10 years. We better start getting on to this formalization of what has already been the status quo for quite a long time. Of course, I'm being facetious. That's not what I think happened, uh, but you never know. Um, but I will be speaking with Thani and I will be premiering that later today to get his thoughts as someone in the United Arab Emirates um, and what, what's going on with that. So let me try to structure a bit more clearly uh, my thoughts on this. Okay, so I will start with this. And again, I welcome your questions. You can wait until I've spoken or you can... Yeah, it's probably better you wait until I've spoken and I ask for questions because I'm, it's hard for me to multitask. Okay, so I am for this um, announcement and for this formalization of relations between the United Arab Emirates and Israel. Okay, I'm for it. It's a good thing in my opinion. And I have a number of reasons for that. Okay, first and foremost, I think that this signals, it's symbolic, okay? It, it symbolically signals a paradigm shift in our relations with the Arab world. And let me explain what I mean by that. Because of course, you could argue that the detractors could, one of the arguments could be, well, this has been happening anyway. So what does this do? And then just sort of, uh, you know, bunch of support for the respective leaders of the countries. But it's extremely important and here's why. This is the first time there will be a formal treaty between an Arab country and Israel. Now listen to me clearly here not predicated on a Palestinian state. The first time we will have peace with an Arab or Muslim country, not predicated on their being or moving towards a Palestinian state. If you look at the announcements from Donald Trump and Bibi Netanyahu, and even from Mohammed bin Zayed from United Arab Emirates, they talk about delaying annexation Okay, I don't like the word annexation. I'll get into that in a minute. Let's call it declaring sovereignty, Israel declaring sovereignty over Judea and Samaria. That is what we give up in terms of or what the United Arab Emirates are expecting from our side. They don't talk about a Palestinian state. And that's huge. Don't underestimate what that means. This is a huge paradigm shift. Now, if you look at the Egypt-Israel Treaty, peace treaty, peace accords, okay, back in the day, almost 40 years ago, that was predicated on Israel and the Palestine, giving self-rule or working towards self-rule and eventually a Palestinian state. That's what it was part of. Now, by the way, at the time, I've read the book um, about the peace accords. I've read a number of books. The PLO, Yasser Arafat and the Palestinians were furious that we made the peace treaty with the Egyptians because the Egyptians kind of relaxed a bit on it. At first, it was going to be that they're not going to make peace with us unless we already in parallel uh, make peace with the Palestinians and, and give them a state or self, at least self-rule. But in the end, there's sort of a compromise solution where maybe that would come later. But there was an expectation um, implied or even explicit in that that we would give the Palestinians self-rule and eventually a Palestinian state. And again, the Palestinians were furious with that and they hated the peace treaty and they felt abandoned. And look, the peace treaty, you can call it cold or whatever, but it's, it works. It's great that we have peace with Egypt. We don't have to worry about Egypt. And, 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 and Egypt um, also closed off Gaza. There's a blockade coming from the Egyptian side. Egypt don't want the terrorists um, infiltrating Egypt either. So whatever way you look at it, that's been a valuable thing. But here, this is different. This is what I'm saying. This is going to be a peace treaty. Okay, we don't have the peace treaty yet, but we have already, let's say, a declaration of intent that there will be a peace treaty. And again, there's no expectation that there will be a Palestinian state. And that's what I mean by paradigm shift. And that's huge. Again, don't underestimate uh, what that means. Now, I'm just looking because I've actually put down some bullet points. Believe it or not, 
Uh, for an ADD guy like myself, it's pretty hard to remember everything, although I do do most of this off the cuff, uh, but I don't want to miss anything. This is a very important topic. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going to look down now at my notes and see what else I should be talking about. Okay. So, um, yeah, so basically what this shows now is that there will be at least one Arab state. And by the way, there's going to be a domino effect. There's going to be ba uh, Bahrain and Qatar and many others are now going to follow suit. That we can have peace individually with Arab and Muslim countries. They're not tying in the whole Palestinian issue. Sure, they put in there that we should delay what they call annexation, declaring sovereignty, but that's, um, that's not the same thing, okay? That's absolutely not the same thing. So again, you, you have to, um, to unpackage this. I can't emphasize enough that this is a big deal. Even if people, the detractors or some of the detractors will say, yeah, but we've had good relations with them with a while. No, this forges a path where there's no turning back. And, and whether or not you like Donald Trump, okay, and I'm also mixed about my feelings towards him as well, as I've discussed on here before. The, this uh, peace plan that he's put forward has definitely changed the, the paradigm in the Middle East. That, that's just the given. Now, what else this does, which is hugely important, is that it shows that Israel can stand up for her rights and be proud and not lose or jeopardize Arab support or let's say um, create a war in the region. And what, what do I mean by this? And, and let me just back up a bit. One of the main mistakes that people in the West do is they impute our Western culture and logic onto the Middle East. Meaning, in the West, compromise is a really good thing, right? If you're in a negotiation, you should compromise. But here in this neighborhood, this tough neighborhood in the Middle East, and we are in the Middle East, of course, it can be shown as a sign of weakness. And, and look what happened with the Palestinian Arabs. We gave in, we gave in, we gave in. And we were met by more terror. It emboldened them. And it made things worse. With them, just if you don't look at the overall ecosystem with the other Arab countries and what's happened now, we're, we're further from peace than ever because we emboldened them. When we were strong, there was a better chance for peace. So we're reclaiming that strength. We're showing that, listen, we can be proud Jews and stand up for our indigenous rights here. And we can still have peaceful relations with other Arab countries. And that I will get into in a minute, but I think we're close to the peace and ever. Okay, I'll, that's, that's one of my, my coming up points. But that's what we need to realize that there's a different mentality here. And if you look at what happened when Trump, President Trump, said that they were moving the embassy, and I saw this on a Twitter thread, so it's not my own thought, but I'm going to repeat it here, that there were so many people, and then CNN and the media were saying, this spells doom for peace in the Middle East, and with Israel's relations with all these Arab countries. It's amazing to, to look at this now. It didn't age well at all. But what we see is that didn't obviously happen. It's, it's, it's making the prospect of peace with our Arab neighbors better than ever. And um, that's actually now what I want to go to. It increases the chance of peace. It might sound counterintuitive, but I believe that this increases the chance of peace because while you had the other, our neighbors, our Arab and Muslim neighbors, insisting that we somehow have to give the Palestinians a state before they'll even acknowledge our existence or talk to us, officially, mind you, because there was been unofficial channels for quite a while, it emboldened the Palestinians. But now the Palestinian Arabs are going to feel more, I mean, in terms of their government, you know, Hamas and Fatah, are going to feel more isolated. Now, when they were emboldened, what did they do? When they were emboldened, they rejected every peace offer we put on the table. 90 plus percent of Judea and Samaria we're going to give to them. And they rejected it many times. Because they felt they, you know, the Arab nations had their back. That's no longer the case. They're going to feel more and more isolated. 
And as you know, from a negotiating point of view and human nature point of view, the more isolated you feel, the less empowered you feel, you're willing to give in more. And they have to give in more because they, they, they just, they've wanted to drive us into the sea for so long. I'm talking again about Fatah and, and Hamas and the PA, but um, not necessarily every Palestinian. I don't believe every Palestinian wants that at all. So I think that this actually increases the chance for peace. So it's a good thing. Now, not only on that level between us and the Palestinian Arabs, but also in the region, because what this also does is actually solidifies our alliance with, at the moment, United Arab Emirates. But as I mentioned, other countries, Qatar and others are going to follow soon. This alliance against Iran, because Iran is the, one of the most, if not the biggest threats to peace in the Middle East at the moment. So by solidifying this relationship and, and, and providing a united front and on a practical, not just a symbolic level, but on a practical level, um, I think that this, you know, peace has never been closer in the Middle East. We have to work out stuff with the Palestinian Arabs, but I believe that that will come. It's a matter of time. But as I mentioned, they have to feel less emboldened and, and see that being, you know, um, perpetrating terrorist attacks and things like that aren't going to be received well. You know, good behavior can reap rewards and bad behavior will no longer reap rewards. That's the way that I see it. So this is why I think peace has never been um, closer at hand. Okay, looking down again. Um, of course, there's the obvious one, mutual benefit between the countries. We're going to have more uh, science and technology cooperation and security cooperation. That's a no-brainer. Again, I'll speak more about this with my friend Thani, who lives in the United Arab Emirates, uh, and I will be posting that later today. That, that, that's a no-brainer. There's some mutual benefits that can now be official. I mean, again, there's been a lot of unofficial stuff going on, but I think that this will now pave the way for more official things. And not only that, a domino effect, as I mentioned, with other Arab and Muslim countries. And that's a good thing. That's a, definitely a good thing. Um, in my, in my uh, mind. Now, another thing why I support this is because the Israel haters and the wokesters hate this. And it shows them up for the hypocrites and, uh, that they are and what they're really all about. And I wrote a post about this. So you have all these leftists, wokester leftists, whatever that means, but you know what I mean by that. And they, you would think that they would welcome peace between the Jewish state and Arab Muslim country. But they don't. They hate it. Now, even if you say, if you think, okay, well, they're about, they want a Palestinian state. Okay? I can accept that they want that. I mean, sorry, that they claim they want that. I don't think that's their end game. They want the destruction of the Jewish state of Israel. And their reaction to this shows it. Because, again, if, all they, if they want to just say the Palestinians have a state, but Israel Jews have their Jewish state. They would, they would welcome this, but then they would qualify it with, well, we welcome peace between an Arab country and a Jewish country. Um, we still believe it's you know, lacking because there's no Palestinian state yet. Or something along those lines, at least showing a bit of positive about it. But they don't. It's all doom and gloom with them. Because they, they don't want Israel. They don't want a Jewish state. And that's obvious, and I've been talking about that for a long time, but their reaction to this, their negativity towards this announcement shows it. It shows what they're about. They're not peace activists. They're the opposite of the peace activists. They want the destruction of the Jewish state of Israel. And this is terrible for them. Because as all for the reasons I've just mentioned, so the mere fact that these horrible people don't like this, or I automatically want to support it, but I've, I actually have thought about it, and I, as I mentioned, I have other reasons for supporting this. But it should show the hypocrisy of these people. Okay, so they're the reasons that I support this. Now, amongst many of my friends on the right, they either don't support this or they've got mixed feelings about it. And I want to address this now briefly, and then I'll take some more questions or some questions. So I'm not really able to follow the, the comments right now because of my ADD. So the whole issue of an, what's called annexation, but it's really declaring sovereignty of Judea and Samaria. So there are some people that say that this announcement 
because it mentions that Israel is going to delay annexation, i.e. sovereignty over Judea and Samaria. It's sovereignty, by the way, because we own those lands, because no other country owned them before. That's a legal thing. Okay, It's not just my, my feelings about it. It's a legally established fact. So let's talk about it as declaring sovereignty. So they'll say, well, this puts that back, and we should declare sovereignty, and this is bad. We've given up on it. To these people, my friends, I say this. First of all, as I've always mentioned, I want to be clear about this. We have the indigenous rights to the land, okay? I'm never going to back down from that. It's just historical fact. Okay, we're indigenous to this land. But as I've mentioned so many times on here, Hevra, be smart, not right. That's my motto. Be smart, not right. We don't live in a bubble. We live in the world. Okay? And while I believe we have the historical right to Judea and Samaria, you have to also look at timing. Now, what do I mean by this? I don't believe Pre um, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was going to go through, at this point in time at least, uh, with this uh, declaring sovereignty over Judea and Samaria. And I don't think the time is right. And let me explain it. And this could be a whole talk for another day, but I just want to quickly mention it because it's going to come up as a question anyway, so I'm preempting the question. And you've got to be, guys, you've got to be practical and you have to be smart and not trying to be right. Because this wasn't going to happen anyway. So what happens, declaring sovereignty in Judea and Samaria, what that would mean is that the Palestinian Arabs, or those who identify as Palestinian Arabs that live in those areas, would need to become Israeli citizens. Otherwise, and listen to me very carefully here, if you have a separate set of laws for them, in, if we declare sovereignty and it's part of Israel, then you do have a, an apartheid system. We do not have apartheid. Those areas are under military rule. That's something else. And Israeli Arabs have the same rights as us. But if you declare sovereignty over those areas, you have to give them the full rights. And I don't have a problem with that if they're law-abiding citizens and they don't want to destroy us. I'll get into that in a minute because that's where the timing comes into it as well. We'd have to pay them bituach lomi, national insurance. It's a huge um, financial thing, if I can put it that way. Now, with the coronavirus and everything and the drain on the economy that it's, it's causing Israel, as well as other countries, of course, all around the world, the time's not right anyway to declare sovereignty. We could do that later, but what I think we need to do is wait Anyway, and by the way, I, it's something I forgot to mention about the increasing the chance of the peace. And listen to me carefully. This is so important. What this normalization now will do, and this is, I don't know why I didn't mention this. This is one of the most important points. People from the United Arab Emirates and following suit, Qatar and Bahrain and other such countries are going to be able to visit Israel. And we're going to be able to visit them. And we establish much better relationships with each other on a grassroots level, one to one. Like my friend Thani and I have already had, and I'm sure many of you out there also have relationships with our Arab and Muslim brothers and sisters out there. But this, they'll get to visit, and they'll get to see the lies close up. They'll be able to visit their mosque, Al-Aqsa, and the site of the Temple Mount, and how they've got freedom of religion here. Because they've been in, many of the Arabs and Muslims in these countries have been indoctrinated. And they're going to see it firsthand. And they're going to see that we don't have horns in our head. And they're going to break bread with us and they're going to eat some great falafel and shawarma and the things that they love as well. And we're going to develop great relationships. And us and our Arab brothers and Muslim brothers and sisters are going to have better relations and that's going to make peace even better. But more than that, I mean, not more than that, but in addition to that, they're going to be allies with us in terms of solving this issue with the Palestinian Arabs. It's gonna, it's a, it really is, in my opinion, a game changer. So this is why, oh, sorry, anyway, so I was talking about this issue of declaring sovereignty over Judea and Samaria and the drain on the economy. Let's wait on that, okay? But we need to do it right. So the more, um, let's say, over time, we're going to have better relations with more and more Palestinian Arabs as well. Look, I know quite a few Palestinian Arabs and they're nice people and they just want to put bread on the table. You know, at the end of the day, it's about we have the same basic rights. Now, of course, you've got the ideological, uh, you know, the Isla uh, Islamic terrorists that aren't rational actors in this. 
Not all Palestinian Arabs are like that. I don't know what the percentages are. I've never done a survey and I'm not going to just you know, say something. It's, it's pretty troubling, the amount of people that do want to wipe us into the sea. But over time, I believe, with the help of our Arab Muslim brothers and sisters um, coming from other countries, now with this, normal, this official normalization, it will, the, the situation will improve. Now, we already see quite a few Palestinian Arabs. That have, and there was a, a news article not long ago where they got into trouble because they said that they would like to live under Israeli rule. They want uh, annexation. They call it annexation, but declaring sovereignty over Judea and Samaria. And I think over time, more and more Palestinians, because the economy rules, right? People have the same basic needs. They're going to be more, there'll be more and more. So I don't think anyway, because of the coronavirus and other factors, now would anyway be the time to declare sovereignty. Many of my friends who mean very well, I don't think have thought about these issues, these practical issues about doing it now. It might sound good, but I don't think it was going to happen anyway. And therefore, I believe that this is a good thing. So hopefully I've explained myself well. Now, uh, let's just look at what the time is because I'm going to be interviewing my friend soon. Uh, one second. Oh, I have a, a few minutes. So I'll take some questions if you want. So now I'm looking. I'm sorry I wasn't watching all the comments. So if anyone has any more questions, just for the next five minutes, I'll take questions and I'll try to answer them. If not, I'll end things here. And then I will be posting my discussion with my friend Thani a bit later today. Okay, so let me just... This doesn't make for good television if I'm just waiting. Can someone bring up a question if you want? If not, I'm just going to end things here. You can, of course, leave comments afterwards and I'll try to get round to them and, and actually write something. Okay, it's a victory. So Mick says it's a victory for those who want peace. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a bit simplistic because there could be people that want peace, but they have different idea of how to get it, as I mentioned. The people that want to um, declare sovereignty in Judea and Samaria, I, don't, I wouldn't say they all don't want peace. They just see it a bit of a different way, a different route to peace. Okay, what's this? Yoni, hi Yoni. You just listed all the reasons why you think it's good. What are your worries? What are my worries? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I mean, I have many worries. About this particular thing, I don't really have too many worries. You see, even if... Let's just say... If I, uh, let, let, me, let me just play devil's advocate. So there'll be people that might be worried that our Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, right, gets a stronger position from this. Now, I'm not pro or anti. I do believe they should probably step down at this point. I'm not a never Bibi guy. I voted for him in the past, but I think the time has come for some fresh blood. And there might be people out there that are worried that this kind of strengthens his position. Actually, I don't see it that way. Here's another maybe counterintuitive position on this. I believe that this actually weakens our Prime Minister, believe it or not, even though he might think he gives him a lifeline. But he's going through all these corruption uh, charges and all these protests because of the way the government has handled the coronavirus. I don't think there's a way out for them. But where was Bibi getting most of his support? He was getting it from the far or the further right people, right? When he mentioned that he was going to annex or declare sovereignty of Judea and Samaria. And what he's done to them, he's alienated them now. And he said to them, because of this um, formalization of um, normalization in relations between the United Arab Emirates and Israel, I think he's alienated many of these people and they're not going to support him with his um, legal woes and everything else. So actually, I think actually, this might, you can quote me on this and if I'm wrong, you can also quote me on it because I've been wrong before. This actually might spell the end of Bibi. You heard it here first or second or third. I don't think this actually strengthens him even though he might think it gives him more time. He's alienated many of his strongest supporters. Does that make sense, Yoni? I, I, I kind of, uh, wait, meaning you said the pros in your mind. What's the flip side? I don't think there's any um, minuses to this. I, I, this is my personal point of view right now. I've tried to give it much thought. If you can think of any minuses, please let me know and I will definitely consider it. I, it's not like my, um, I'm, I'm entrenched in this opinion. If you say, oh, wait a minute, did you think about this? And I'll be like, ah. Oh. Interesting. Because, I, again, I don't think that this um, takes completely off the table the idea of declaring sovereignty over Judea and Samaria. So I don't see any minus. I don't think... No, I don't see any minuses to this, actually. 
Thank you, Michelle. I think you were right about this. Thank you. How are you doing, by the way? <laughs> Any other questions? I'm going to end this soon. Oh, okay. Yoni agreed. Wow, I'm getting some agreements here. Not that I need. Does someone want to disagree with me? You know, I, I give it lots of thoughts and I evolve my opinion based on your input. Um, you know, I'm just a guy trying to make sense of everything. I'm not, I don't claim I'm a regional expert. I think I'm pretty well read, but anyone can be well read. You just have to read a lot, right? Ah, okay, Michelle, good. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I think I should leave it there for now. Um, if you have any further comments afterwards, please leave them in the comments section and I will try to get round to them. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be discussing, oh wait, we have something here. Uh, who are influential in the UAE within the Arab nations that could be against it? Who are influential on the UAE? No, well, Iran is going to be against it, right? <laughs> You've got this whole Sunni Shiite uh, issue going on. And basically anyone that is scared of Iran, which are all the Sunni nations, and we are, mark my words, there will be more formalization of normalization between other Arab countries and Muslim countries in Israel because we are forming this alliance against Iran. Iran is the biggest threat. They're going to be against it, and they're the bad guys. Just like I said, all these so-called wokesters are against it. You know, it's sort of like, if you see these sorts of people are against it, then without any further thought, you could go, you know what, this is a good thing. I've given it further thought, but uh, that's the sort of superficial level. You know that if the bad guys hate it, then it's probably good. Also, you know, Mahmoud Abbas is against it. The Palestinian Arabs are against it. The, the, the government, Hamas, hate it. Hezbollah, all these actors, bad actors. No, that's what I'm saying, Michelle. UAE does not like Iran. Exactly. That's exactly my point. They're, they're, they see Iran as a threat just like we do. This has been the start of the reproachment that's been going on for years already. Definitely, Iran threatening the region has led to this point. Any other questions before I go? Yoni, flight plans will now change. Oh, fl sorry, flight plans will now change because of this, because we will be able to fly over the countries. <laughs> Not just over the country. Yeah, true. That's great. Another good reason. And there are already people that are planning their vacations to go to Dubai. By the way, there's a um, a kosher restaurant there. Uh, in case anyone, there's a Chabad house there already. You know, some people were saying, I saw, oh, now Chabad are going to be really happy. They've been happy for a while. Are you kidding me? There's a Chabad synagogue in the United Arab Emirates already. This is just formalizing things. Saudi Arabia is influential on the UAE. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So again, um, and I'm going to finish up here now. So if you have any further questions, I'll deal with them later. This is a paradigm shift. And even if you're one of these pro, uh, you know, you, you're not happy because uh, you think that Israel gave up and declaring sovereignty of Judea and Samaria. I've explained why I think that's a bad idea right now anyway. We ha it, it might take time. It, that might be the solution in future. I'm, not, I'm definitely not against that. But you have to consider all the implications and the time now is not right. Now we should develop these great relations with our friends in the Arab Muslim world. And it's, as I mentioned, this is why I think it's a good thing. Um, I have a cousin who lives there. Okay, great. Oh, so you'll be able to visit your cousin now, Michelle. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because I have to get on to a, my interview with Thani, which will probably not be live for technical reasons. Um, but I will definitely be streaming that a bit later today, and that should hopefully be very interesting. Um, okay, in the meantime, take care, everyone. Shabbat shalom, and uh, see you next week.